let's have a look at the story that we started talking last night because I think we can draw some more conclusions about the uh, Kitty Allen situation at the moment because um, it feels much more of a beat up now that we have more information than we talked about last night. We still don't have all the information, so I don't want to be like, this is the final answer now. There'll be more information to come out. But uh, we are going to have a look at uh, what, ha what has come out in the last 24 hours. Kerry Allen, who returned to Parliament on Thursday after taking mental health leave, has said she never had any formal allegations made against me in any way, shape or form. Now, straight away, my, my radar goes up by with the word formal. Because, you know, mm. what does that mean? Was there thousands of informal? I'm not saying that's the case, but, you know, politicians pick their words very clearly. But we'll go on. At the same time, staff was investigating. The National Party was also asking questions. MP Simeon Brown, your favourite, Chewy, the, uh, oh. the party's public services spokesman, had lodged, lodged an official information act request with the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. Um, and they talked about that there was a text message that's come out and the text message is revealing. One text message that was asked for in the uh, OIA, the Official Information Act, uh, fell within the scope of his request, but MBIE boss Carolyn Tremaine said that she was withholding that text under a clause that exists to allow free and frank exchange of opinions within government. Now, I love the idea of this, that you can have a free and frank ex exchange of opinions. That means you can have a good old fucking row with your in your political office for the sake of coming to a conclusion. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it actually yeah. this idea of a free and frank exchange and that actually being okay and 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 be allowed to be had in a situation of an office, I think is a is a great idea. And I actually think, as you know, Chewy, as you'll know if you're watching or listening, is that sometimes the written word doesn't come across as well when you don't have context. But in the context of a, quote, free and frank exchange of opinions, I think that that's a, a great uh, thing to be able to have in government. And I think that it's also great to be able to withhold that should that perhaps paint an inaccurate picture of what was actually going on. Now, we'll be fair with that. If it was national, we'd be saying the same thing. Um, stuff's been told by two sources, now because now we want to know what was in those text messages. Stuff's been told by two sources that the messages came from Deputy Chief Executive Robert, and I'm going to go with Peugeot, P.O. In a written statement, P.O. said that the text, quote, does not express concerns about staff working in the office and therefore no follow up action was needed. So one of the texts basically says it's been reported. Nothing to see here. He also said there is no correspondence, formal or informal, between him and the current private secretary for regional development in Allen's office since February. That refers to Allen's behaviour. Peugeot don't know, also said no formal complaints had been made by staff about Alan's conduct and no staff were removed from the office because of concerns. He added that he has good relationship with staff and is confident they would share with him any concerns about safety and well-being. Again, sounds like nothing to see here. Staff sought further clarification from Peugeot and he replied, in my role, I have informal discussions with all of my staff, including our private secretaries that support our ministers. And I consider these discussions to be withheld under Section 92 GL, I think it is, of the Official Information Act 1982. That'll be the free and frank mm. clause, I'm sure. To maintain the effective conduct of public affairs through the expression of free and frank expression of opinions. I have no concerns with these discussions around culture and treatment of staff in Minister Allen's office. And if there were, and these were shared with me, I would take the appropriate action to action this. Now, we're going to have a look at the News Hub story about this as well. I, I actually think the details I've given you now, Chewy, is probably even more in-depth than the News Hub story. So before we mm. do that, which is going to kind of echo some of the things I've just said with a little bit more, any thoughts around what we've heard? Like, obviously on last night's show, I, I, I really only just come across it at that stage. And I've been thinking about this and reading about it today. This does seem, to my eyes at least, to be a massive beat-up. Mm. This just like I don't like the fact that this apparently happened last year. I don't like the timing of it that it's popped out when uh Hipkins is away in China, which you know, if he comes back with a good deal, yeah. that's that's a huge thing, right? So let's take the take the gloss off that. 
Um, it just seems too, and I know a lot of people have thrown this around, obviously a reference to Nikki Hager's book, um, Dirty Politics. It does seem mm. like dirty politics. Well, well, when um, you hear that, when you hear that story, right, and you mm. hear that there are people who are the people who are said to have been the ones who are either wronged or who are the people who the wronged have been reporting to, who are saying nothing to see here. And and then the story I'm going to play from News Hub, it also says that basically the department, and I think it's Doc, is it? The department that was allegedly wronged, or people within that department who were allegedly wronged that we heard about last night, all with one voice today have said, no, no, everything's fine. That's when I start to go, okay, let's layer these things on top of each other. And now I think it's a bit easier to go, um, it feels like dirty politics to me. Last night, we'd only had the story for literally two hours. So as you know, I made no comment. Um, but tonight, I think you can look at it and go, the evidence that's coming out now, the opinions that are coming out now tend to lean towards there being nothing to see here. And so therefore I go, Occam's razor, why is this happening now? What's the most likely scenario? Yeah, Chippy's overseas. Yeah, is National trying to stir things up while Chippy's overseas to then go, it's a, what do they call them, a something of chaos or whatever? Look, Chip, the Prime Minister steps away and it all falls apart. I think there is more credence to that argument today than there was 24 hours ago, Chippy. I mean, Chippy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I just I'm gave, not Chippy. I'm not I China. Just, I just gave you a, a boosting to the Prime Minister. So let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at the story from News Hub. I've just given you a whole bunch of details, but there is a few more in here. Um, and let's see what they had to say tonight. Kitty Allen faced an awful lot of questions today, fronting once. Happy to be back at work. Twice. Hey, Sam, shall we go around two? Three times four. There has never been any allegations put to me, which is, again, why I've found this story challenging. The allegations relate to reports that leadership and ministries raised concerns about the treatment of staff seconded to her office. One of those was the head of the Department of Conservation. I made a statement yesterday and the issues were resolved over 12 months ago. In that statement, she said concerns oh. were being raised about working no. relationships and that it wasn't running as smoothly as it might. One staffer left early. Also, the head of the Emergency Management Agency said he was aware there were concerns about relationships in the office. I'm pretty proud of our crew and I'm really proud of our team. Uh, we're the kind of office that uh, we run hard while we've got the ball and um, I think it's a pretty been a pretty great place to work to be honest. This all led to a showdown in a select committee. You have OIA'd everything under the sun and you have still yet to turn anything up. So have the opportunity to ask if there's anything that prohibits me as a minister from doing my job that the public entrusts me to do running. With all due respect, the impact that ministers and the relationship with their staff is incredibly relevant. The bus come to work every single day with a real focus on getting things done for New Zealanders. This isn't a blood sport for most of us. But heads at that Wow. Let me, let, let me say this. This is Whoa. This actually leans me to more thinking about the talking point that National was trying to say, because Kitty Allen said really clearly, you've OIA'd everything, you've found nothing, there's nothing to see here. Simeon Brown's response is, I think there's something to see here. In other words, he was still went straight back to the relationship with staff in the office, whereas Kitty Allen just said, you haven't turned up anything yet, show me the money. Yeah. You haven't turned up anything, therefore there's no claims to made. And then Simeon Brown made the claim again. I'm going to play it again so you see that. Yeah. And that says Absolutely. to me, enough of the talking points get out. It's like throw enough shit, some will stick. That's why mm -hmm. it feels a bit more dirty politics today to me. Have a listen again. She gets to the end of her, 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 her challenge, says you can't prove any of it, and then he throws it out there like he can prove it. Matty. You have OIA'd everything under the sun and you have still yet to turn anything up. So have the opportunity to ask if there's anything that prohibits me as a minister from doing my job that the public entrusts me to do running. With all due respect, the impact that ministers and the relationship with their staff is incredibly relevant. The bus come to work every single day with a real focus on getting things done for New Zealanders. This isn't a blood sport for most of us. But heads at the mega ministry, MB, the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, today backed Alan. Yeah. From time to time, we fall short and, um, and we'll have a conversation about that. That's entirely appropriate. We have a, um, a really good open relationship um, and you know, I have had 
far more challenging ministers to deal with in the past. <laughs> a challenging first day back for Alan after taking some mental health leave after breaking up with her fiance, former RNZ presenter Marnie Dunlop. Need a little break, a little, a little heartbroken. Kitty Allen wasn't the only minister in hot water today. The education. So this is the bit of ungentility after um, her misleading, misleading uh, parliament. She was found not guilty of any sort of official charges, but still was asked to apologise. We're not really going to talk about this tonight because that seems to be a story that's done. Uh, but I'll play you the 60 seconds of this just so everyone's up to date. Education Minister Jan Tanetti was found not guilty of misleading the House when she failed to correct the record after finding out her staff had been interfering with the release of the Ministry of Education's data. The powerful Privileges Committee ruling Tanetti was not guilty because her actions arose from a high degree of negligence on her part, not an intention that the House be misled. Not, that's it's not, not the best. It's not, not the best a defense. great win, is it? Yeah, you're, fu you're, you're fucking oh. useless, so we'll let you off, but still. Oh. My view is that that was because she was too ignorant to have been malicious. Uh, and that's an indictment on Minister Tanetti. It, was this a rookie mistake from a senior minister? I will apologise to the House having seen the report. That is all I am going to say at this stage. And apologise she did. I accept the committee's findings and I apologise to the House. One of the day's silver linings, one ministerial mess mopped up. There you go. All right, Joey, let's get into Kitty Allen. Your thoughts? That's, uh, right. that's now, now we've got a bunch of information, her words as well as Simeon Brown's accusations. Absolute fucking beat up. I, I, I just want to acknowledge w one thing here, right? So Kitty Allen's obviously had a tough time of things, had to take a break. Yeah. Her speaking to Simeon Brown in, in that uh, inquiry, wow, that that is a woman with some steel in her backbone. Yeah, yeah. Like to come out of, of, of something like that and to come into an inquiry like that and just... There's a couple of people in the chat uh, using the word mana, and I think 100%. Hmm. I mean, it, 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 it just feels feels really tactical that they are just picking at some key government ministers, just throwing shit at the wall, trying to tie them up on inquiries and that sort of thing. Yeah, it seems shitty, man. Really shitty. I, I think that, I mean, maybe maybe the good story out of this, maybe it's not good news, I don't know. But um, part of the good news out of this is um, the media is reporting, like the, the, the two major government agencies have said nothing to see here. The, the minister has said nothing to see here. The OIAs haven't turned up anything and the media is reporting that. So I don't suspect you will see this last for very long. I don't suspect you will see this do very many news cycles because even the most ardent opponent of Labour I hope, I think, if they're fair, mm -hmm. can still look at it and go, well, just show us the evidence. Okay, show us the evidence, Simeon, mm. or shut the fuck up. I mean, that's really where we're at. Show us the evidence or shut the fuck up.